everybody, this is Pitchcock Black here and welcome to Underworld Updates number 38 in which today I'm going to be unboxing um, apparently 11 Doctor Who books um, basically what happened um, with this is that um, from the same seller that I got the dying days from um, I got contacted by him saying that he was selling off his entire Doctor Who collection and he, and he said to me are you interested in any other um, Doctor Who books so I gave him a list and uh, the ones I included on there were the remainder of the Time Rhythm and the Cat's Cradle trilogy that I needed um, so like I didn't put these ones on here Time Rhythm Apocalypse uh, Cat's Cradle Warhead and Cat's Cradle Witchmark because I already have those so in here should be the remainder of the Time Rhythm uh, quadrilogy and the Cat's Cradle trilogy um, that I need which is Time Rhythm Genesis, Time Rhythm Exodus, Time Rhythm Revelation and Cat's Cradle Times Crucible the reason why I bring this up is because um, he said that there's apparently 11 Doctor Who books in here and two and for my memory I can only name eight of them so it's possible that he included these uh, books as well Time Rhythm Apocalypse, Cat's Cradle Warhead and Cat's Cradle Witchmark as well which is really interesting so but anyways this is going to be a very long video so without further ado let us begin this unboxing of this absolutely massive parcel and by huge it is absolutely freaking huge as you can clearly see it is a ridiculously big parcel okay so easy enough to open it it is that bit of tape just came off there Eh, yeah, taste the sellotape. Don't put sellotape in your mouth, kids. It tastes fucking awful. Anyways. Almost there. So yes, I'm really interested to see what's in here. Okay. Let me see. Oh, I forgot about that one. How can I forget about that one? Yes, in here, I've got this entire lot for only £45, and there's some quite rare Dot 2 books in here as well, which is really good. So, I'm just going to put these in rough order. Maybe this is 11 Dot 2 books. Oh, wait, hmm. He put in another copy of Cat's Cradle Witchmark, as you can see, which is interesting. Um, and another copy of uh, Cat's Cradle Warhead as well, which is interesting. Um, and there's no Time Room and Apocalypse in there, which is interesting. Um, so, yeah. Just checking. Eight, nine. Yeah, I completely forgot about the rarest Doctor Who book in here, which must have made it um, nine, including these two. So, so I've got now I've got double of um, Cat's Cradle, uh, Warhead, and Witchmark, which is interesting. Uh, so yeah, but anyways, on to the books um, that I do not have duplicates of, which are, if I should just get these in order, roughly. Uh, there's a couple um, BBC novels in here, PDAs and EDAs, and I don't really know the order of those, so sorry if they are um, a little out of order. Um, so anyways, on to the Virgin uh, New Adventures, with the first book that was actually released from that range, which is Time Worm Genesis by Jean Peel. Let's move those out of the way, and shuffle the camera forward a bit. Um, so yeah, Time Room and Genesis, so let's uh, take a look at the contents of this book and the kind of presentation of it. So we have uh, the new Doctor Adventures, uh, Time Room and Genesis, John Peel, and then there you've got the seventh Doctor there, um, some sort of um, Egyptian guard it looks like, the Time Room herself, and then the innards of the actual kind of um, temple that this uh, book appears to be set in, it looks very kind of Egyptian and a bit alien. Then on the spine um, is Time Room Genesis in red, uh, John Peel. Then you've got the Sylvester McCoy logo down there. 
and then here you've got the back of the blurb, the new Doctor Adventures, a little bit about um, uh, the series, uh, the author, and a little bit about the book. Second. Uh, then down there you've got the prices and uh, whatnot, and the barcode uh, right down there. Um, but anyways, uh, now onto the synopsis of this book. Um, Mes Mesopotamia, uh, the cradle of civilization, in the fertile crescent of land on the banks of the rivers Tigris and Euphrates, mankind is, is turning from hunter-gatherer into farmer and from farmer into city dweller. Gilgamesh, the first hero king, rules the city of Uruk. An equally legendary figure arrives in a police telephone box. The TARDIS has brought the Doctor and his companion Ace to witness the first steps of mankind's long progress to the stars. And from somewhere amid, amid no distant points of light, an evil uh, sentience has tumbled to her followers in the city of Kish. She is known as Ishtar, the goddess, to the Doctor forebearers as an ancient caliphate. She was a mythical terror, the time woman. Uh, full length science fiction uh, novel stories too broad and too deep for the small screen. Produced with the approval of BBC Television, the new adventures takes the times into previously unexplored realms of space and time. John Peel has written several uh, novels based on Doctor Who television series and is the author of the Gallifrey Chronicles, the definitive description of the Doctor's home planet and its people. Um, that must be just another Doctor Who book called um, Gallifrey Chronicles. Um, yeah, it must be because I think um, the Gallifrey Chronicles, the BBC novel, is written by a different author. Time Room is the first adventure in the four volume Time Room series. And then for the presentation of itself and the innards of it, oh god. As you can see, unfortunately, it is stuck a bit. As you can see there, like, I can't. But as you can just about. I wonder if I can actually get this out. So I don't want to damage the book, but as you can see, it's just like a little page of Time Room Genesis on there. Appears to be stuck to that, which is unfortunate, but oh well. Uh, Doctor Who New Adventures, also available, are uh, the Time We're In books, um, we did enough to feature Genesis in it, uh, the Cat's Cradle books, and then the next five um, uh, Virgin New Adventure books. New Doctor Adventures, Time We're In Genesis, John Peel, forward by Sophie Aldred. And down there you've got a library sticker, various um, copyright guff, a uh, free face, and then for the actual book, um, it runs for 230 pages across an epilogue, 23 chapters, and a prologue. And this little thing here, um, which is kind of like a prologue to the prologue, I guess. Um, but anyways, Time Room and Genesis. I really don't know too much about this Doctor Who book. It started off the um, New Adventure line, obviously. Um, but other than that, I don't really know much beyond this book. But I am pretty interested in reading uh, the entire Time Room series and then the Cat's Cradle series. Um, because I now have all seven of those books. Time Room Genesis, Time Room Exodus, Time Room Revelation and Time Room Apocalypse along with Cat's Cradle, Time's Crucible, Cat's Cradle uh, Warhead, Cat's Cradle Witchmark and Cat's Cradle Witchmark. And also apparently the Virgin New Adventure novel Deceit, um, written by Peter Darville Evans, um, which I also have in my collection. Um, apparently that features a lot of um, clean-ups um, to the Time Room and Cat's Cradle books, so that's some interesting, so I may do a little marathon of um, all those books, the Time Room books and the Cat's Cradle books, and then um, the seat. Um, uh, but yeah, but anyways, there's Time Room Genesis. Uh, next book in this lot is obviously, uh, as you would have guessed, uh, Time Room Exodus. Um, uh, so yeah, so without further ado, let's take a look at the cover art. Uh, you've got the new Doctor Who Adventures, Time Room, Exodus, Tone Sticks. And for the cover itself, it's really, really good cover art. Don't know if you guys can notice this, but this hand here is kind of um, breaking um, the box of the new Doctor Who Adventures, which is a really nice attention to detail. But anyways, you've got Ace here, um, some sort of hand holding a dagger with a Nazi swastika on it. Um, got candles in the background, some sort of goat-like creature. Um, a candle, um, Hitler's um, uh, kind of eagle swastika sign, because I believe this book does take place in an alternative timeline. Um, then they've got like a little castle thing, which reminds me of the NES games Castlevania a little bit. So, anyways, really nice cover. 
then on the spine we've got a very odd choice of colours, uh, Time Room and Exodus, Terran Sticks, um, Time Room and Exodus in blue, and Terran Sticks in red, then there you've got the New Adventures, uh, the Good and Good, then there you've got the uh, Doctor Who Sylvester McCoy logo, um, I, I kind of, it's a bit jarring this kind of um, colour combination here, I don't know why, I just kind of um, makes me get a little itchy for some reason, um, not in those ways of course, I'm not that sick, um, anyway, then here you've got the blurb, uh, the new Doctor Adventures, a little bit about the author and then the um, series, um, then you've got there you've got the barcode and then the original prices for this book. The pursuit of the time worm leads the Doctor and Ace to London 1951 and the Festival of Britain, a celebration of the achievements of this small country, the insignificant corner of the glorious thousand year wretch. Someone or something has been interfering with time, the timelines, and in order to investigate, the Doctor travels further back in time to the very dawn of the Nazi evil. In the heart of the Germany of the Thurlich, he finds that this little band of thugs and misfits did not take over half the world unaided. History must be restored to its proper course and, and in his attempt to repair the timelines, the Doctor faces the most terrible dilemma he has ever known. Uh, full length science fiction novel, stories too broad and too deep for the small screen, produced with the approval of the BBC television, yada yada yada, you've already heard that. Um, Terran Sticks has written many uh, novels based on Doctor Who television stories and was script editor for this series for five years and co wrote and wrote quite a few stories. Um, Time Room and Exodus is the second adventure in the Time Room series. In for the itself, we have Time Room and Exodus. Um, oh wow, that's interesting. Um, and there you've got other kind of um, Virgin New Adventure books available. Um, the New Adventures Doctor Who, Time Room, Exodus, uh, Terran Sticks. And there you've got um, uh, kind of uh, copyright guff. Then, you've got, then there you've got a contents thing of this book, which is pretty bizarre. So it appears to be a. Um, let me just see. It appears to be a 233, 234 page long Doctor Who book split across a prologue an epilogue, a coda, and four parts. Uh, so there appears to be uh, 10 to 27, 29 chapters in total, which is pretty interesting. Um, part 1 is called 1951 Occupation, Part 2 1923 uh, uh, Part 3 1939 War, and part 4, 1940 Crisis and then at the back of this book we have um, a bit about Terran Sticks and a long message from the um, uh, publishers um, which is pretty interesting uh, and then at the back you've got already published uh, Virgin New Adventures uh, which has got quite a few in here uh, then we've got this little guff that um, some of the books came with back in the day, as you can see there. Anyways, Time Room and Exodus, I'm very curious in reading this book, like I said, I am very curious in reading the entire Time Room series, but what really interests me the most about this uh, Doctor Who novel is that um, um, it takes place in an alternative timeline, kind of like the um, alternative time cycle arc, which from later on in the Virgin New Adventures, from Blood Heat to No Future. Um, so it takes place in an alternative timeline apparently in which the Nazis actually won the war which is really interesting and also apparently this book features the surprise return of an old villain um, which I do not know so it's going to be interesting to find out who that is and read this book again I don't know too much about it but it's meant to be brilliant and the final book in the Time Room series is Time Room Revelation with one of my favourite cover arts to be honest uh, the New Doxy Adventures Time Room Revelation, Paul Cornell in these kind of nice purple and kind of mustard yellow um, boxes. Um, then for the uh, kind of cover art itself, um, in the top we have space, uh, earth, there, the moon, a church, um, an astronaut, and then a doctor literally dancing with death, which is pretty fucking awesome. And then on the spine we have Time Room Revelation in purple, Paul Cornell, uh, Doctor Who, Sylvester McCoy logo. And then for the back we have um, uh, the blurb, the new Doctor Adventures, uh, kind of uh, a bit about the uh, uh, new adventure series, which I've uh, already read off um, multiple multiple times, and I won't read it off again. Uh, 
Then down there you've got uh, a bit about Paul Kono and Time Ruin Revelation. Uh, then down there you've got the prices and the barcode. Uh, the parishioners of Cheldon Boniface walk to church on the Sunday before Christmas 1992. Snow's in the air, or is it or is it the threat of something else? The Reverend Trellor has a promotion too and discusses it with the spirit that inhabits his church. Perhaps the doctor is about to visit them again. Some years earlier, in a playground in Perivale, Chad Royal picks up a half brick. He's going to get that creepy kid Dorothy who says he she wants to be an astronaut. The weapon falls, splitting Dorothy's skull. She dies instantly. The doctor has the serious hunger and from prehistoric uh, Mesopotamia uh, to Nazi Germany and then to the end of the universe. Has he tracked down the creature? Has he tracked down the creature again? But what tempor trans temporal trap has the time we prepared for the final confrontation? And then down there you've got that uh, guff about the uh, Virgin New Adventures, which I've already read off to you guys. Uh, Paul Colonel's writings include uh, radio comedy and television drama, as well as many Doctor Who magazine articles about Doctor Who and stories and storylines from Marvel's Doctor Who's uh, comic strip. Time Room Revelation is the fourth and final adventure in the Time Room series. The Doctor's travels will continue in the forthcoming Cat's Cradle series of novels. And then for the innards of this book, we have Time Room Revelation. Uh, other, other available uh, books from the Virgin New Adventure line. The New Doctor Adventures Time Room Revelation, Paul Pinell. Then they've got various copyrights. Um, who this book is for. Up there it says for Jackie Marshall. Um, and they've got with thanks. Uh, and then this book is split across 220 pages with a prologue and uh, and an epilogue um, and 13 chapters and at the back of this book I believe you've got more yep you do, you've got um, same sort of thing with Time Room and Exodus um, the news about the novels um, uh, the kind of um, really published in the Virgin New Adventures line thing and that guff again about who are you and um, uh, sign up to get this like sign this petition to get more Doctor Who books kind of thing anyways time re time re re revelation um, I really don't know too much about this Doctor Who book but um, apparently it's also meant to be really good and I think this is the rarest out of the uh, time re room uh, series um, but again I'm pretty curious in reading it like I said before and this is probably one of my favourite cover arts of all time, just for simple reasons. The Doctor dancing with death quite literally on the moon. What could be better than that? And then for the only Cat's Cradle book that I needed out of... Um, and now for the uh, only Cat's Cradle book in this um, kind of um, unboxing. Uh, Cat's Cradle, uh, Time's Crucible. So up here we have the new Doctor Adventures, Cat's Cradle, Time's Crucible, Mark Platt. And then down here you've got um, Ace on a bike. A cat down there showing off its arse doing a moony, um, which is kind of disturbing. Um, why the fuck did I just say that? Anyway, <laughs> then now they've got some sort of technological city in the background. And then here you've got this um, claw thing, which um, um, I believe is called the process, but don't quote me up. Yeah, it's called a process, I think. Um, so yeah, quite an interesting cover art. Uh, Cat's Cradle Times Crystal, Mark Platt, uh, Doc 2, Sylvester McCoy logo. Uh, then there you've got the kind of normal layout for your um, Doctor Who Virgin Adventure books. Um, you on your own, Ace. The TARDIS is invaded by an alien presence and then and is then destroyed. The Doctor disappears. Ace, lost and alone, finds herself in a bizarre. Oh, mid sentence. Uh, finds herself in a bizarre deserted city ruled by the tyrannical, leech-like monster known as the Process. Last lost voyagers drawn forward from ancient Gallifrey perform obsessive. Uh, rituals in the ruins. The strands of time are tangled in a cat's cradle of dimensions. <laughs> Only the Doctor can uh, challenge the rule of the process and restore the stolen future. But the Doctor was destroyed long ago, before time began. Then they've got the new Doctor New Adventures logo type thing. And then that usual guff about the um, uh, version New Adventures. Uh, Mark Platt wrote the screenplay of Ghostlight, one of the most uh, recently televised adventures of, Do of the Doctor and Ace and novelised the story Battlefield from the same season. Uh, Cat's Cradle Times Crucible is the first in the uh, three volume uh, Cat's Cradle series. And down there you've got kind of various prices and uh, barcode and whatnot. 
then for the image of this book we have Catch Crow with Time's Crucible. Uh, originally published at uh, Virgin New Adventure Books. Uh, the New Adventure, New Doctor Who Adventures, Cats Cradle, Time's Crucible, by Mark Platt. Um, and then down there you've got uh, various copyright guff. Um, who this book is dedicated to and uh, uh, Paul Cornell's thanks. Um, and it's kind of interesting quotes. Uh, cradles of the cats are strings and air. If you let go, there's nothing there. But if we are neat and nimble and clever, Pussy Cat's Cradle will go, will go on forever. With one Piper, the libretto on Britain's Ogla, The Turn of the Screw, so it appears to be a poem, which is interesting. And then this book is split across um, 275 pages uh, across a prologue and. Uh, and 31 chapters it appears, 31 chapters, um, yeah, so it's split across 275 pages with a prologue and 31 chapters, this is the first chapter there, bookends, which is my favourite shop in the, um, town near me, um, which is pretty awesome, um, and they've got books already published, um, so yeah, And then they've got the usual kind of guff that you get in the back of Doxy books, that petition thing again. Um, but anyways, Times, uh, Cat's Cradle, Times Crucible. Again, I am pretty interested in reading this book. Like, I'm interested in reading all of the Virgin New Adventures pretty much apart from a couple maybe like The Pit, for example. But, um, or like there's some that I have higher interest in, in reading. Um, but anyway, Cat's Cradle, Times Crucible. I'm pretty interested in reading this book. It's meant to be uh, really good, albeit a bit weird, I think. Um, so yeah, and since I already have um, these books right here, uh, Time Women, uh, Apocalypse, Cats Go to Warhead and Witch Mark, I will not show those books off in this video. Um, but anyways, I now have the entire uh, Time Women and Cats Cradle series of books, which is awesome. And now moving on to the very rare Virgin New Adventure out of this entire um, kind of um, uh, job lot that I got. Um, and that is The Room With No Doors by Kate Orman, which is one of the later Virgin New Adventures. And um, I think Sullivan Productions said on Skype um, that this is a really shit cover art. Uh, I don't understand why. This is one of the best cover arts I have ever seen. Look at it. It's absolutely incredible. Ah, oh, beautiful, beautiful cover art. So there you have The New Adventures, The Room With No Doors, Kate Orman. And then for this, um, then for the cover art itself, in this kind of very kind of... Asian uh, China like setting we have uh, some sort of temple the moon picking its uh, face throughout the clouds um, and there you've got um, uh, one of the characters from this book who might be Benice Summerfield I'm not sure and then I don't think it's Benice Summerfield then there you've got some sort of ninja dude um, on some rocks who appears to be having a good time um, uh, the room with no doors Kate Orman then the spine we have the room with no doors Kate Orman then the virgin logo from the later very late uh, virgin new adventures uh, then now you've got the room with no doors and the adventures, Kate Orman, and then you've got a bit about Kate Orman, and then uh, various uh, guffs such as who did the covers um, and the cover painting, the prices, and then what genre this is, which is science fiction and TV tie-in. Then there you've got the barcode. It's a second. Anyways, and on the back we have uh, Doom with No Doors, Dear Doctor, uh, Vogue Chris, I Give Up, Swords Play, Sword Play, Samurai, Demons, Magic, Aliens, uh, Adventure, Excitement, Who Needs Them, The Doctor and Chris travel to the 16th century Japan and a country gripped by civil war as feudal lords vie for control. Anything could tip the balance of power, so when a god falls out of the sky, everyone wants it. As the villagers are healed and the crops grow far too fast, the Doctor and Chris try to find the secret war of the miracles before too long uh, rival armies can start a war uh, uh, over who who owns the, the god. Uh, Chris soon finds himself alone except for an alien uh, slaver and a time travelling Victorian inventor, a gang of demons and an old friend uh, with suspicious motives, a village full of innocent bystanders and several thousand samurai. Uh, Without the Doctor, someone has to take up the challenge of adventure and stop the god falling into the wrong hands. 
Someone has to be a hero, but Chris isn't sure who he wants to sure he wants to be a hero anymore. And I'm not going to go over the um, innards of this book um, because this video is getting extremely long. Um, um, but anyways, I'm uh, really curious in reading um, *The Room with No Doors* by uh, Kate Orman. Um, it's meant to be a really good Doctor Who book. Um, um, actually, I don't know too much about this Doctor Who book actually, but I am still, again, uh, pretty uh, curious in reading it. Um, so yeah, there's a room with no doors by Kate Woman. Again, very curious in reading it. So that's all of the version of the adventures I got, and this video is going on for is going on pretty long now. So I think I'm just going to breeze uh, through these few final books. Um, because I think some people may be kind of falling asleep by now and um, uh, and I do agree that the video is going on for too long but the other Doc 2 books that I got in this uh, job lot were um, uh, the PDA Asylum uh, by Peter Darvill Evans apparently this Doc 2 book is meant to be a bit um, kind of crappy um, but uh, uh, um, but I'm still pretty curious in reading it. It's a fifth Doctor novel, I believe, and um, oh no, it features the fourth Doctor. And um, apparently, this book um, has um, features the fourth Doctor in this, set, and apparently, it's um, set after um, what do you want to call it? Um, oh, I can't. Uh, Terminus. It's apparently set after Terminus for um, Nissa, which is pretty interesting. Um, but anyways, I'm still pretty curious in reading it. Uh, next up, I also got from this job lot, uh, The City of the Dead, uh, by Lloyd Rose. Again, I'm pretty curious in reading this one. Um, and it's one for the 8th Doctor, which is interesting. I thought it was the 7th Doctor one, but no, it's a pounding 8th Doctor one. Again, I don't know too much about this book, but I really enjoyed the Out of Advice. Lloyd Rose's other Doctor Who book, so I may enjoy that. Uh, I also got um, Prime Time by Mike Tucker with a very creepy cover art. Um, and I'm pretty curious in um, reading this uh, Doc 2 book. Apparently it's meant to be quite a good Doc 2 novel. Again, I'm pretty curious in reading it. Um, yeah, and also apparently it takes place right after Doc 2 novel Storm Harvest. And I think I mentioned um, this before. I think this is part of that kind of um, season of Doc 2 books Mike Tucker and Robert Perry um, did. Um, to like replace um, uh, season the abandoned season 29, the season after survival. Um, but anyway, so I'm pretty curious in reading that book. Should be an interesting read. And then I also got a very rare, um, quite a rare EDA, um, Time Zero, which is an Eighth Doctor um, adventure and the beginning of the Insane Doctor arc. Um, I don't have the rest of the Insane Doctor arc, so I'm not sure if I'm going to read this one anytime soon. Uh, but it's a nice addition to the collection. And I also recently went back to um, that Stax um, second-hand bookshop and got um, a few more Target novelizations from there. I got um, the uh, Talons of Wang Chiang um, version reprint. Um, really like this cover personally. I, re I really do like it. Um, again, I, really, I already have the original Target version, but um, it's nice for the collection. I also got the um, Target novelization of Castro Balvo, which is one of the worst Doctor Who covers ever. Um, anyways, <laughs> um, then there, I also got the target novelization of Silver Nemesis. Um, so yeah, there's that. Um, and just want to quickly mention that this is the most terrifying depiction of um, the Seventh Doctor and Ace I have ever seen. The Cyberman looks like it's um, masturbating frantically. He looks very squashed up his face. Anyways. Um, and that finally concludes Underworld Update um, number 38. Um, sorry I didn't go through all of the books in much detail, that's because this video is going on for long enough and um, um, the video has probably gone on for like another half hour. Um, if I was to go through all of the books in as much detail as I was going through them uh, with the Virgin books. Um, but anyways, click, like, comment, subscribe. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Pitch Girl Black, Dematerializing.